come out of the darkness, through the trees, make your way through the ominous and darkened streets, for I am expecting you. I invite you in, out of the shadows and the cold. The only way you may enter in is through the door of your mind. Join me, for I am waiting. Up the stairs and in the room to the right. Open wide the door of your imagination. Climb into your warm bed and settle in. Have you ever had someone predict something about you in the future, and then have it come true? In tonight's chilling tale, we hear of a little girl that had such a gift, but to those she shared it with, it was most unwelcomed. I call the story Little Rosie. Little Rosie. It's important to note that this is written from a female's perspective. For the privacy of all involved, the names in this account have been changed. I teach children between the ages of three and six. I enjoy my work and take pride in their development. You get odd children every now and again, but I have one child that sticks out most. We all call her little Rosie. She's what can only be described as a small child almost doll-like in stature and features, red, puffy cheeks, baby blue eyes and long blonde hair. To be honest, when her parents first brought her in for the first time, I did think it was a doll and almost laughed in their faces. She's a quiet child, polite, and usually thoughtful. But recently, the things she comes out with are beyond disturbing. It started last week when a young boy named Ross came crying to me during the morning break period. I managed to make out the words, My mummy is going to get rid of my daddy, through his blubbering and wailing. Of course, a lot of children are thrown in between their parents during a divorce, so it wasn't unusual for a child to get upset about it during school hours. But we had never had a case of a child predicting another child's parents separating. When I found out it was our well-mannered little Rosie, I was shocked and almost didn't believe it. I called in Rosie during the lunch break and sat her down at one of the wooden benches that the kids sit on to eat lunch. Have I done something wrong, Miss Richards? Her little dungarees and Aryan looks made her look so innocent. Despite her ability to melt the hearts of anyone she talked to, I powered through and confronted her about Ross. She straight out denied saying it. I asked patiently one more time and she denied it again. Ross had no proof it was Rosie, so I let her go. Within a week, five more children came to me all crying about things Rosie had said. Each time they had gone progressively worse. The first was listing details of what sort of things went through a person's thoughts in their final moments. Another memorable one was Rosie telling a child that they would kill someone in a car accident at 27 years old and commit suicide due to the guilt at 32. I confronted Rosie and told her that she had to stop no, Mrs. Richards, I don't have to stop. I haven't done anything wrong, she said in response. I cut the shit and called her parents that afternoon. I ordered them to come to my office and discuss Rosie. The dad never showed. Apparently, he could just not leave his work, but her mom did. She didn't look anything like Rosie. Her mother was tall, skeletal, brunette, and to be honest, looked like she hadn't seen sunlight in months. I spoke and read off the list of comments Rosie had made. When I eventually finished my rant about her disturbed little cherub, she just apologized and said she would talk to Rosie. I wanted to say more, but the mother just slipped out her chair and glided out of the door. I swear she made no sound as she left, not the slightest footstep. Two days later, we received a letter from Ross's mother, explaining that his grandmother would be caring for him whilst her and her husband dealt with some 
family issues at home. Rosie has behaved for the past week. Her behavior has been out of the ordinary, though. She sits by herself staring at the clouds and the sun, well, the sky in general, to be honest. She came up to me at lunch and asked if she could talk to me about something. We went and sat at the bench I first confronted her on. Before I could ask what was wrong, she started spewing out facts about the First World War, Nazi Germany, ancient Greece, ancient Egypt, and facts that a child of that age could not have known. She even spoke in what seemed Arabic, and then Latin. No one could have known what she was telling me. Rosie! I interrupted her. Where have you learnt all of this? Who has told you this? Was it mommy or daddy? I was causing a bit of a scene. The two other teachers on duty were giving me shifty eyes. A little Rosie's eyes locked with mine. The blue color almost seemed to be waving and swaying like ocean waves. I saw it all myself, Mrs. Richards. The slightest smile was growing on her delicate face. I know all that has and all that will. It was disturbing hearing such adult use of language coming out of her. I sat there absolutely starstruck. I could feel my jaw hanging open slightly. My lips were trembling. Rosie slid off the bench and landed on her feet. She brushed down her denim dungarees. Mrs. Richards, please watch out for the man with the rope tonight. He's waiting in your bedroom. I just sat there staring at her. She stood there smiling, her little face glowing under the sun. I am not from this world, Mrs. Richards. Rosie spun on her heels, preparing to skip off. Neither are you. I went home that night. I called the police on my way home. I told them that I thought an intruder might be in my home. The officers went in first. When they came out, they sat me down and offered their apologies. My husband had hung himself in our bedroom around about lunchtime. Thank you for listening, and remember, be careful of those who predict the future, for you know not where it comes from. Stay scared. <laughs>